thank you for joining us for another Sunday School Online. We love having you watching, so we really appreciate you taking some time to watch this, our Sunday School Online. Well, thank you so much to those who sent some work in to us this week. We've had some great work sent in to us by some people from Coffs Harbour. We've had Daniel has done some great work, as well as Leela and Liam. Thank you for your hard work. And we've had a bunch more work coming all the way from Zambia, which is in Africa. Great work, everyone. I wish I could colour in that well. I know I said it last week, but I struggle to stay in the line. So great work. Thank you for sending it in and keep it coming because we love to see it. Well, we've got some great stuff happening this week. We've got a song, a memory verse, and a lesson from the Word of God. So let's get into it. We're going to sing a song. We're going to sing it with Christ in my vessel. Now, there's a few actions for these, so you might need to stand up and follow along as we do the actions for With Christ in My Vessel. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm, smile at the storm, smile at the storm. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm, as we go sailing home, sailing, sailing. Okay, now we're going to do that again, but this time, instead of saying smile at the storm, we're just going to smile, so I don't want to hear you sing. So follow along as we do it, and we'll do the actions again. With Christ in my vessel, I can at the storm, at the storm, at the storm, with Christ in you did it thank you everyone well done hello everyone it's mrs hannah here with another memory verse for you this week and this week's verse comes from proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction I hope that you want to have godly wisdom in your life. Let's have a go at learning this verse. We're going to break it up. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. I hope that you have a go at learning this verse this week and that you say it to someone in your family. All right, boys and girls, it's time for another lesson from the Word of God. Do you remember what we looked at last week? Well, if you don't, we looked at when David came back after the fighting the Philistines. And that when he first came back, King Saul and all Israel loved him. And do you remember that David picked up a new best friend? Do you remember his name? I'll give you a second. It was Jonathan. Jonathan was King Saul's oldest son, and David and Jonathan became best buddies. And remember, they made like a pinky promise, or a, they made a covenant that they were going to look after each other for the rest of their lives. And while David and Jonathan became best friends, things soon turned with King Saul, because King Saul got jealous of David when he heard that all the people were turning around and saying that David was a better soldier than King Saul. And Saul got really jealous and that when David came to play the harp, like he did for Saul, Saul tried to kill him with that javelin. Remember, he threw the javelin at him twice, but David escaped. Well, this week we're going to follow on from that, but before we do, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the word of God and the great time that we can have at Sunday School. We pray that you help us to learn now from God's word that we can be closer to Jesus. Thank you for the word of God. Amen. Now, if you've got your Bible, you can read this later this week. This week's lesson comes from 1 Samuel 
chapter 18, verses 12 to the end of the chapter, which is verse 30. So maybe you can read that sometime this week. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 12 says, And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Boys and girls, King Saul, while he was watching David, the more he watched him, the more afraid he got. Because he could see that everything David did, God was on David's side. Because King Saul had disobeyed God, God had said that Saul was going to lose the kingdom and that he was not going to be king and his sons weren't going to be king. And this made Saul really afraid of anyone that was a wise, godly person. And David was just that man. And this made Saul really worried that he was going to lose the kingdom to David. And so Saul decided that he was going to kill David because he didn't want David having that. And Saul came up with a plan. Last week, we saw that King Saul had made David one of the promoted soldiers in the army. And at this stage, that meant that he was probably like a, an army general that was behind the lines sorting out the army. But King Saul gave him a promotion. And he said that David was going to be a captain over a large group of men. But this wasn't behind the lines. This was at the very front of the army. So that when the battles were happening, guess who was going to be on the very front line? King, well, David was going to be on the front line. And this was done by King Saul because he wanted to kill David. He didn't want him to survive. Well, Saul did this and sent David in, uh, into the army. I'll read what he said there in verses 14 to 16. It says, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. With him. Therefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. You see, King Saul thought that by putting David on the front line, that David would be killed. But you know what happened? The opposite happened. David actually flourished. Everyone loved David. Everything he did. He got better and better and better. We're told that as he went out to battles and came back, all of Israel, the whole nation, loved David because he became such a wonderful captain to the army. And you know what? This just made King Saul even more afraid. It made him worried that he could see that God was with him and he could see that David was a wise man. And this made Saul really afraid. So Saul came up with another plan to get rid of David. He decided that he was going to let David marry his daughter. Now, if you remember, this was one of the promises that King Saul gave to David when he fought Goliath, that whoever could beat Goliath would get the king's own daughter. King Saul hadn't done this yet, but he thought that this might be a way of trapping David. So they were starting to plan the wedding, and just before the wedding, guess what King Saul did? He decided that his daughter was going to marry someone else, and poor David didn't get to marry his daughter. And King Saul thought this would have made David mad and done something silly or stupid, or... but guess what? David was a wise young man, and he did the right thing. It didn't bother him. He just kept doing what he did. He was an obedient, loyal soldier. And this made King Saul even more worried. And so King Saul then heard some good news. He heard that one of his other daughters, Michal, actually loved David and decided that maybe he could get her to marry David instead. And so he was a bit afraid to talk to David. So he got his servants to do the work. And when David found out that he wanted to, he could marry the king's daughter, he was happy at that. But the king had a deal to make. He said, if you want to marry my daughter, you have to do something. You have to go and kill 100 enemies, 100 Philistines, and bring proof back to me that you have done that, David. And if you do that, I will let you marry my daughter. 
And you know what? He did that for one purpose only. Because he was hoping that when David went to battle the Philistines to kill these 100 men, David would be killed himself. But we know that God was on David's side. And when David went down, he took his men and went down to, to battle the Philistines. Just to make sure he was doing the right thing by King Saul, he killed 200 of the Philistines and brought the proof back to Saul and gave them to him to say, hey, check this out. I have done what you have said because I want to be a loyal man and I want to marry your daughter. Well, King Saul couldn't put it off any longer and he let his daughter, Michal, marry David. And they got married. But do you know what? Even though David became the king's very own son-in-law and even though King Saul, uh, even though David was on King Saul's side, King Saul hated David even more. We're told at the end of verse, uh, end of chapter 18 and verse 29, it says, And Saul was yet more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Even though all this had happened, and David had proved himself to be a loyal, reliable uh, officer, Saul hated David even more. And he became enemies with David. Saul hated David that much. And boys and girls, do you know why this was? Do you know why Saul hated David so much? Well, I think it was because of what we learnt in our memory verse this week. From Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, where it said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. David was a very wise young man. And David was obedient to God and God had blessed him. God had allowed him to become a wise, faithful soldier. And you know, boys and girls, that made Saul angry and worried. But we should learn to be wise like David. I want to read you another verse from Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, it says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of the mouth, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You know, David was a very wise young man. What made him wise, you may ask? Well, he trusted God and he was obedient to what God had said. And when he was obedient to God, God blessed him and God looked after David and David was able to grow and become more wise. And more, as he learnt more about God and obeyed God more, he became wiser. And boys and girls, we can be the same. We don't have to be an old person to be a wise person. By obeying God and learning about God and reading about God from the Bible, we can become a wise young person. Just like David, he probably wasn't much older than a, a late teenager by this stage. Maybe an early 20s. But he was a very wise man just from a young boy because he trusted and obeyed God. Will you trust and obey God? Will you become a wise young boy or young girl? Because that's what God would have you be. Because I don't know about you, I don't want to be a foolish person like King Saul. And that's the op alternative, is to be a silly person and a foolish person like Saul. Well, thank you for listening. But I want to remind you about one other little thing, boys and girls. One of our crafts today is based around a story that Jesus told about a wise and a foolish person from Matthew chapter 7. And I want you to go and read that this week about the wise man and the foolish man. And you can do the craft about building a house like the wise man and the foolish man did. And you'll see whose house lasts longer, whether it was a wise man or a foolish man. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something this week from God's Word. Thanks everyone for joining us this week for Sunday School Online. Have you seen this week's silly session which came out on Thursday? That was pretty silly, Mr. Oh, Dave. it was very silly. And speaking of silly, there is another silly video that's gone up. Well, actually, it's pretty good. It's from our friend, the Professor. And he's done a 
pretty cool trick and he's got a Bible lesson too. So if you haven't seen that yet, follow the link below and have a watch of that because it is a lot of fun. Don't forget this week to send in your work to us because we love seeing it and maybe even a bad joke from Mr. <laughs> Dave's famous bad joke yes, section. Yes, we've had some bad jokes come in, so keep them coming. We love to see them. And we really thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe with your parents' permission. And remember, until next week, that Jesus loves you.